came back, her eyes when I asked her mom what happened, she said that I said did anything happen? She said something like that. I said I my dad died. She said yes. My husband called me Inky. Whenever he's coming back, Ink, I will know that my husband is coming back. I miss him a lot. What of the rent? Nobody. My husband they are alive, but they don't have. She collected the house. She threw everything down and said, I don't want you in my house. The foundation of the house, you have spoiled it. Everything more, please, can you leave? Mm, after the death of my dad, everything seems as if every, the world is, is turned around for us. All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're right on time for our next conversation. I have you with me, the producer of that documentary, which you just saw. Bolanle Ulukani. Thanks for being here today. Hey, Ibuka. Yes, let's, 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 let's start on that <laughs> note now. What, what, what motivated that? Because, I mean, people know you for being on TV. Mm -hmm. you are, you're a presenter on, on Moments on yeah. Ebony Live TV. Yeah. You do everything media-based. You also mm -hmm. own your red carpet show. But yeah. this was sort of a surprise for people. Where, where did that come from? You know, it's funny because I remember the last time I was on Rubbing Minds. I think it was 2015. Yeah. And you asked me, you're like, oh, what are you planning on doing, yes. you know, in the next year? And I told you I was going to yes. produce a yes. documentary. Yes. <laughs> um, so I finally did it. I, I think that I've always been very passionate about finding a way to merge, you know, my passion for helping others and also my passion for creating content and media into one and producing a documentary about women who are marginalized, not out of their own choosing, but because, you know, life happened, you know, yeah. widows. Um, and sharing on some of their stories has been an opportunity that yeah. I'm really, really happy. You know, when you, t when you told me then that you were, you were going to produce a documentary, <laughs> I don't know that this was what I pictured. Was this yeah. always what you, was this, was this the plan then? No, so it wasn't. It's, it's interesting because um, I remember then in my head, I was just looking for a story that I knew I could connect to. Okay. Um, there's a documentary that's infamous. A lot of people, you either love it or hate it. Uh, Welcome to Lagos. And I remember, I just love the fact that they were doing something that I felt like wasn't happening in the media space here, telling Nigerian stories. You know, when you think about who we are as people, we're fascinating people. And documentaries do that. Yeah. They tell people stories. Um, and God's Wives came about because I had started working with the woman a year prior to actually producing this in 2016, December. And, you know, I just realized that I wasn't really using my platform to do anything for anyone. Um, people will say they're inspired by you, but what does that really mean? Like, how has someone's life really changed based on the fact that I have exposure and I have access to other people? Um, so I was really, really excited when I realized that I could use storytelling to tell about people's stories who are really struggling and challenging. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing that you decided to do that because I, a lot of people, like you said, just do, talk the talk but not necessarily mm. walk the walk. You know, mm. I mean, it's, 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 it must have taken a lot for you to decide to do this now. But so this is an organization you found? Yes. Or were you a part of that? So <laughs> let me, it's kind of a complex story. Okay. So, okay. Um, in December, I started working with an NGO called the Self Worth Organization. And that organization worked with women who are widows. Okay. Now, um, while I was working with them, you know, she told me that she had the desire to open an empowerment center. And the center would train women on makeup, tailoring, and catering. And I was like, okay, this sounds like a thing we can do, you know. Because normally they would have like a Christmas party for them. You know, they'd give them rice and oil. But there's a difference between giving someone a gift and then teaching them how to actually make income from themselves. Because when you think about it, a lot of these women lose their husbands, right? And they become the automatic breadwinners. You have three to four children. And the question is, how are you going to fend for yourselves? Yes, your relatives might help, but are they really going to be able to help you in the long term? Yeah. So, um, you know, she want, the sister Chinere, who's the ED of the self-worth organization, wanted to actually open an empowerment center that they would be able to learn a skill that they can actually generate income from. So I was like, okay, that's fine. We can do that. So we opened the empowerment center, which is based in Surulere, um, in Aguda, last year in March. And then during the process of training them, I started hearing about their stories. And while I was you know, hearing their stories, that's when I decided, okay, you know what, I'm going to produce this documentary. Um, and I named it God's Wives because that's what God calls them. You know, he says that he takes care of the women who are widows and the orphans. And, um, yeah, that's how it kind of all came about together. Great stuff. How's the, how's the journey been? I mean, is there, is there more to come from this? Is this so, was this a one-off? No. So it's definitely been an amazing journey. Um, we have the center in Surulere, which is open. And we're going to be opening another center in Ajegunle. 
Uh, and, you know, this documentary, what it really is, is an opportunity to let people hear other people's stories and also a fundraiser. Um, so while we, we did the first screening in Lagos, um, we raised about $1.3 million. Um, which is great because now we can move into a larger center in Surulere because after our first batch of training We were able to train 75 women and these trainings are free um, the women come into the center They don't have to pay for anything. You know, we cover all of the overhead costs and we do everything by ourselves and um, you know they, they just have the opportunity to see that their lives don't have to mean nothing just because they've lost a spouse um, because when you think about it a lot of times in Nigeria like as a woman, I'm not married, and I know that people in so many ways, so many people consider it like you're a half person, right? Then you go from being married, then you lose your spouse. And uh, there's this whole notion of what did you, did you have anything to do with it? You know, um, what are you going to do now? A lot of times, none of them, they can't remarry, specifically because cultural practices and society says, you know, if you may remarry, then you won't be able to take your children into the new husband's homes. So um, I know of one woman who she was 29, lost her husband at 29, had four children, and to this day, she's not remarried. You know, so when I hear about these kind of stories, I'm like, there has to be some way where if and this is no sh well this is shade if the government is not going to do social services then we as the people need yeah. to do it for each other yeah yeah very well done well done that's 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 very impressive and Thanks, um, i want to touch on something that you talked about earlier about documentaries um, yeah. and your journey why do i mean like you said we don't seem to find a lot of these stories being told in nigeria not just about widows just generally mm -hmm. documentaries mm -hmm. properly done ones so did you find that it was too hard to do why do you find that documentaries are tough to make here oh my gosh so hard um i shot the documentary twice the first one, well, that was also because of technical issues because it was my first time producing, writing, and directing a piece of my own. Um, but I also think that sometimes, you know, when a camera comes in front of a lot of people, they, we switch personalities. We're not, we become these kind of, yeah. we, we project what we think you want the producer to As give you. what is. Exactly, you know, so maybe instead of being as vulnerable, they're not as vulnerable. And what I really loved about this opportunity was I didn't just go out to the street and pick random people who have never met me to tell their story. You know, I had grown a relationship with these women because I've been working with them with the, in the center. And they were able to be vulnerable and tell me about the hardship of losing their husband. Um, but I also think sometimes in life, you know, when our society can be very hard and living here can be very, very hard. And when you live in a harsh society, Nobody really wants to hear serious stories. Every day you face the reality of the reality. Yeah. And, you know, that's why comedy sells and that's why, you know, fiction sells. But the honest truth is that even in this documentary, even though it's very serious and it's very harsh and, you know, it shows a lot of faces of poverty that we often don't actually hear the stories behind, there is a ray of hope in it, you know. Yeah. There are women who have children who hope for the best. They want their children to do well and to flourish and um, I think through the center we've been able to really give a lot of people the opportunity for hope but the thing is the reason why I actually started talking about it because I was working with them for a whole year is because I realized there's only so much I could do by myself um, you know and if I have the ability and access to people like you you know my friends you know people at home we can come together and we can literally pioneer and change the face of what it is that we see in Nigeria because the honest truth is we really just need to stop depending on, you know, the government or s certain civil society groups. All the and time, we yeah. just need to do it for ourselves. Yeah. Well done, well done, well done, well done. God's Wives, it's on? Yes. Um, so God's Wives, so I'm doing a screening, a press yeah. tour. So um, the tour is, uh, next stop is Abuja. And it's probably going to be the third week in January. And then after that, it's going to be on Terrestrial TV. Great stuff. Yeah. Can't, wait, can't wait for that. Thank enough, you. enough of God's Wives. <laughs> let's... That's funny. How are you doing? I'm fine, How's Ibuka? Balan Lee doing? I'm always so nervous when Ibuka is going to interview me <laughs> oh, yeah. because I'm like, what is he going to ask but me? But you were here two years ago and it was three years ago and it was great. You asked me some questions. But they were good questions. They were good questions. They, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. how are you doing? How's, how's work? How's life? It's really, really good. I think I'm at a really happy place. Um, very content. <laughs> very, you know, sometimes, you know what the work we do sometimes is you have to evolve and it's hard to kind yeah. of sometimes pinpoint and identify where you're going and sometimes you know it can feel like a rat race um but i feel very you know paced yeah. i'm taking my time i was going to talk about that 